So after missing the playoffs for the first time in 16 seasons, the Pittsburgh Penguins organization has decided to make some major sweeping wholesale changes to their front office hierarchy. Gone are team president of player operations, Brian Burke, general manager, Ron Hextall, and assistant GM, Chris Pryor. The three lasted a total of just a hair over two years. In normal circumstances, 1A franchise in sports makes such drastic wholesale changes after such a short period of time. I'm the first to jump out and say, you know what? This is a premature overreaction, that this is rash. However, in this circumstance, especially with Hextall and Pryor, namely Hextall, I think they made the right move. I was never crazy about the Ron Hextall hire to begin with. I thought it was a strange marriage, a square peg in a round hole, oil and water, whatever superlative you want to use. And before anybody asks me, no, it has nothing to do with the fact that Hextall, once upon a time, was a very, very good goaltender for the Philadelphia Flyers. I don't give a damn about that, okay? And no, I do not buy into this asinine conspiracy theory that he specifically took the GM job to tank the Penguins organization. Why? Okay? Hextall's a lot of things. Couldn't stand him with the Flyers. I couldn't. But he's not an imbecile. The guy knew coming into this job Two things. Number one, didn't exactly have a hard gig on his hands. It's not like he was taking over a dysfunctional clusterfuck of a franchise where he had to completely build from the ground up. The pieces were there. All he really needed to do was maybe add a chip or two that would finally get this team back to some playoff success. They had slipped a little bit. After 2017, this team has been stagnant. They can't win a playoff series. Add a piece, add two, do something to give this team the spark that gets them winning a playoff series again. And mainly, don't fuck it up. No, failed at one, and he certainly succeeded. At, he certainly succeeded at fucking things up. So now he's gone. But he knew coming in, those were his two responsibilities. He also knew that if this went south, his chances of ever being a GM in the league again were done. So why would he deliberately tank? And by the way, now the Penguins have a slim, very, very, very slim chance, but slim enough to win the draft lottery and get Connor Bedard. If that's sabotaging the team, sabotage the fuck away. I will give him credit where credit's due in one avenue. At least he didn't trade treat draft capital like it was uh, a toilet paper in a toilet bowl like Jim Rutherford did. And we'll talk about that here a whole lot in a few moments. My issue with Hextall is, I just didn't think he was a good GM. Like I said, I thought he lacked as a GM. I didn't like him in Philly as a GM. I thought he was inadequate. And I thought when Rutherford finally stepped down, and believe me, I thought Rutherford was losing his touch at the end. I thought Pittsburgh was starting to gradually turn into what Carolina was when he finally got ushered out of there. I wanted to see them bring in some fresh blood who had a record of sustaining and bringing in some youth to keep the ball rolling. I didn't want to take steps backwards. And I thought that's what Hextall was going to do. And that's exactly what they did. Brian Burke, I felt the game passed him by five years ago. Pryor, Pryor and Hextall are attached at the hip. So I thought this move sucked. Then, and it did nothing to, to prove right. Uh, again, I'll give Hextall credit. He, he kept the draft picks. That's something Rutherford never did. And he did get Richard Reichel. The Jeff Carter move for one year looked great. Then it looked like shit after. Well, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. I get it. But, you know, beyond that, it was a, it was a big F. But I will tell you this much. As much as Penguins fans are celebrating right now and playing good riddance over their radios and screaming at the hills, thank God 
hit the road, Jack, don't you come back no more. Get the fuck out of here. Spouting this conspiracy theory gibberish. I'm going to say this straight up. Whether it's Jason Botterill or whoever the hell they bring in as their new GM. If you guys honestly think that this person is going to come in and wave the magic wand and everything's going to get back to status quo and this team's going to be winning Stanley Cups galore next year, starting next year and go on a, a, an Edmonton-esque run of the 1980s. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you're not looking at the deeper root of what the real problems are. And trust me when I tell you, they did not start with Brian Burke, Ron Hextall, and Chris Pryor. Okay? Now, granted, that trio did absolutely nothing to make the problem better. They certainly added a few layers of kerosene on a fire that had been enraging. But they weren't the root of the issue. Jim Rutherford, for years, played Russian roulette with this team's future. How many draft picks did he piss away on the Derek Broussards of the world? The Kasperi Kapanins. Which, by the way, it's funny. Kapanin gets traded, goes to St. Louis, and looks adequate. Looks decent again. Never looked that way in Pittsburgh. Is there another big problem? We'll talk about that in a minute. The only player that looked semi-reasonable in Pittsburgh that was given a first-round pick was given up for was Jason Zucker, and that was his year. By the way, it's his walk year. Incident? Coincidence? I think not. And I've said then, this fuck this pigs mentality doesn't work. You've got to think of the future because Sid's not going to be here forever. Okay? Malkin's already starting to show signs of slippage. Not surprising with the physical style he plays. It was going to happen sooner or later. God bless Chris Letang. God bless him. The guy had a cancer scare this year and came back. He's eventually going to get caught up too. Father Time's going to catch up with them all, guys. And Jake Gensel was a diamond in the rough. That guy's become much better than I think anybody expected he was going to be. But how much more are we going to play this game of brush it under the rug, kick the can down the road? It happened a couple times with stupid trades Hextall made. Stupid moves Hextall made. All right? Let's, let's keep Jeff Carter protected and let's expose McCann, who had 40 goals this year with the Kraken. At 25, let's let's not protect him, but let's keep Jeff Carter. Had a great run with the Penguins. He had a great half a season, but Carter's not young. <laughs> By the way, um, let's trade Sam Lafferty. <laughs> let's trade Sam Lafferty, who looked pretty damn good in Chicago, and they got a decent return for him when they flipped him to Toronto. Let's trade him for some guy who now is, you know, ushering back and forth between here and fucking Wilkes-Barre. <laughs> I mean, who can't seem to get his footing. Oh, and when the hell are we going to fix the goaltending problem? That's been a stick in the ass ever since Flurry was left unprotected. Now, granted, I know that's that's been a bane of every Penguins fan's existence, and I know hindsight's twenty twenty. Oh, Flurry Flurry wasn't getting any younger. Murray looked like the dude. I won't beat the hell out of Rutherford for that. But when are we fixing the problem? When are we going to do it? When are we going to even try to address it? Murray wasn't that dude. He's gone. Tristan Jari is as inconsistent as a day is long. I don't mind Casey DeSmith, but he's a great second option. He's a great guy that you want to start for 10 or 12 or you know maybe 20 games a season. He's not the number one netminder. When are we going to do it? Is it going to happen anytime soon? We've played musical chairs with the defense, right? We, we usher out Matheson when he finally starts to look like he's having a pulse for, for fucking Jeff Petrie, like, who's shot. What the fuck are we doing here? Seriously. So like I said, Hextall and that crew did nothing to fix the problem. Made it worse, but ain't just them... Those three aren't the square root of what started all this. It started with Jim Rutherford. And by the way, I, I hate to be the one to address the elephant in the room here. But is it time we start looking at coaching? I mean, come on. Come on. Kapanen 
looks like shit in Pittsburgh, goes to St. Louis and looks good. And I know, I know, guys, I know. Sullivan won back-to-back -back cups. He won two cups. No other Penguins coach has ever won two cups. That's awesome. It's been six years since the Penguins last won a cup. Six, seven. Right? 2017 was six years ago. It's been six, seven years since they beat San Jose. Six since Nashville. How long are we going to give him that leeway? How long are we going to hoist this guy on the, the Golden Hills of Mount Washington because he won a Stanley Cup in 2016 and 2017? How long is he going to get that leeway when they've been bounced from the first round of the playoffs every freaking year since, and this year missed? Washington's won a Stanley Cup since then, and they've cycled through three coaches since. The fucking Kraken are in the playoffs this year. The Penguins aren't, the Kraken weren't even a thought <laughs> when the Penguins last won a Stanley Cup. They weren't even a, a twinkle in the NHL's eye. Gary Bettman wasn't even considering Seattle then as a franchise. Vegas, year one, makes a Stanley Cup. By the way, Vegas makes a Stanley Cup in year one. Year one. They've been through three coaches since. But we're going to sit there and slobber on the baloney of, of Mike Sullivan because he won two Stanley Cups six and seven years ago, almost a fucking decade ago. What are we doing? You know, okay, two two Stanley Cups, that's great. Ask, ask Suter in Los Angeles how much that worked for him in the end. All right? Suter didn't get to keep his job. They ushered his ass out the motherfucking door. Uh, I know he became a scumbag. He was an ultimate scumbag in Chicago, but ask, ask Joel Quenville. Oh, by the way, the Canadians made a Stanley Cup run in the bubble year, and I don't think their coach lasted 28 games the next year. I'm exaggerating. But he's not there. They've changed coaches since then. What the fuck are we doing? What are we doing? It's time to really look at the root of the problem. Okay? And there's going to be some difficult decisions to be made. I get it. But we got to start looking. Is it time to hit the reset button on some of our favorites? And I'm not just talking about... No, Hextall was nobody's favorite, but I'm, you know, is it start to start to hit the reset button? And I'm not just talking in the front office. Is it time to shake up the coaching staff? I mean, every year seemingly gotten worse and worse. Is it time to start saying goodbye to some of our favorites? Look, Gino Malk is one of my all-time favorites. I love Gino. I don't know, guys, but so new GMs coming in, and they're going to have some work to do. They are going to have some serious work to do and some serious questions to answer. So that'll wrap it up. Thanks for tuning in to my thoughts on the state of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Um, until next time, I'm JP. Thanks. Peace.